Balloons are just the ultimate party must-haves. From get well soon wishes to heart-shaped Valentine presents, balloons are everywhere. But how are these colorful latex balls of air made and just how much effort goes into making them? Let's find out. Acquiring the rubber. While there are synthetic alternates towards rubber, which can be manufactured from petroleum, for balloons natural latex is always preferred because of its much higher elasticity and long-term durability. And this kind of latex is acquired from a type of tree, originally native to South America, but has since been introduced into Africa and Malaysia, two of the biggest exporters of the material. And to harvest the latex, workers make a bunch of small shallow cuts into the trees, which then ooze out of the thick yellowish material. This is then collected into buckets and mixed with an alkane solution so it doesn't immediately set. All that's left is for the latex to be shipped in its liquid form to the balloon factory, where the next phase of the manufacturing begins. Preparing the latex Now, if we made balloons out of simple latex, they will carry its pale whitish color, which might not be awful, but it definitely wouldn't be the same, wouldn't it? So, the first step that the freshly arrived latex undergoes is dyeing, wherein huge batches of latex are mixed with synthetic colors for each kind of balloon. And to ensure that the thick liquid proposedly dissolves, all the pigment that is often mixed for upwards of 16 and up to 20 hours. And finally, once this almost day-long process is completed, the color latex is then brought into the tanks, where it will be used to make the balloons. These tanks, since they are going to be exposed to the air, also require constant stirring and a constant temperature so that the now activated latex does not set. Now, while this is being done, the factory workers on the other side are preparing the other part of the balloon half, making and preparing the molds. This is where the company decides what kind of balloon it's going to make, or even what exact thing they'll be making in the first place, because depending on the shape of the mold, you can make anything from a plain round balloon, a fancy animal shaped balloon, or hell, even a condom or a rubber glove. Now, unlike other plastic molds, which are meant to be poured full of liquid, these molds are actually meant to be dipped into the liquid. As a result, instead of being hollowed shells, they are basically the basic shape of the company wants the balloon to be. Also, since the rubber will have to be removed after it's solidified, the molds are usually made of very smooth materials, usually stainless steel, aluminum, or pulsolane. And finally, once the molds have been selected and decided upon, the company puts them in an assembly and runs them through a power washer to make sure they are perfectly clean. Then they are passed through a dryer and finally make their way to the next step. The Dipping in Two Parts Now, before the molds can be dipped into the actual latex, they need something that will make sure that the clearly liquid latex won't just flow off the molds. As a result, before they go into the chamber, they are first heated and then dipped into a tank of cold drink solution for a few seconds. This gray solution is usually a mixture of water with a calcium-based salt, which helps make sure that the latex is in uniform later. Soap, which cleans any last particles that may interfere with the layer, and talc powder, which helps ease the removal of the formed balloons later on. And once the dip molds are removed and the excess collagen is gone, the molds are then heated to 100 Fahrenheit to 200 Fahrenheit before finally being dipped into the latex. Where, if the collagen was applied correctly, a thin, perfect layer of rubber will form into the molds. This process is also crucial because this is where the most mistakes can happen. As a result, the entire process is done at perfectly controlled speeds to avoid trapping air bubbles and to achieve an even thin coating. And that brings us to the last manufacturing step, making the ring. While most of us rarely pay attention to it, the most important part of a balloon is the tough rubber lip at the opening. Not only does it serve as the place to hold and blow the balloon, but it also provides it with the additional strength. And since the molds are meant to gather a perfectly uniform layer, another technique is used to add the lip. Once the latex dip molds have just started to dry, the lower stems of the balloon are passed through a pair of upwarding rotating brushes, which fold the lower end of the balloon upwards into a perfect ring. And since this step is done before fully drying the rubber, the lip actually holds its shape, which brings us to the last manufacturing step, the finishing touches. Now, even though at this point the rubber has been solidified, it is still not totally ready because it needs to be vulcanized and cleaned. As a result, it is first dipped into boiling hot water for a few minutes, 
This not only removes the excess collodion underneath the balloons, easing their removal later, but it also activates the rubber or vulcanizing it, making it achieve its proper plasticity and strength. Hell, some companies even bake the balloons in a dry oven for over an hour just to make them as strong and balloon-like as possible. And with that, the balloons on the mode are finally ready to be taken off. This is done by what is actually the first test of the balloons. Basically, after the water and collodion make sure that the balloons are no longer sticking, a pair of super powerful nozzles blow a thin current of air into the balloon openings, which blow them up and throws them onto a conveyor belt below. That leads them into the last chamber, a large rotating oven where all excess water is removed, and then the balloons achieve their maximum strength. And that is really all there is to it. After this, the batches may be tested for strength, printed with letters or words if that's required, or arranged as desired before being packaged and sent off to millions of birthday parties around the world. Now it's time for the colorful story of these vibrant party essentials. History it might be a surprise to a lot of you to know that balloons have actually been around for a lot of human history, but not in the way that you might think. You see, before the 1700s, most balloons were made from, get this, animal bladders. That's right, people used to take sheep or pig bladders and inflate them to turn them into clumsy balloons, but all of this started to change in the 18th century, when people started to experiment with newer glasses and materials. First, a couple of French paper makers, Jacques and Joseph Mongolfer, discovered that when paper bags are filled with hot air, the bag rises, and after making a successful demonstration, they were able to make a bunch of iterations with other papers, as well as silk. But the real revelation came with the discovery of industrial rubber. You see, the material balloons are made from its natural rubber, which is acquired as a residue secreted by rubber trees that when it touches air, turns into a material that can stretch to seven or eight times its length without breaking a sweat. And while that form of natural rubber had been known for centuries, it was only used to make very basic items like balls or bottles. But all of that changed in 1830, when a scientist in England discovered how to make products by pouring latex onto molds, the same method is used for making gloves and balloons today. And a century later, in 1921, scientists figured out how to control a rate at which the latex rubberizes, allowing industrialization into the industry. And just 10 years later, a man named Neil Tietzlon created the world's first inflatable balloons in his attic to sell at the Lotual Patriots Day Parade in Massachusetts. And that, in short, is how balloons came to be. Click one of the two videos on the screen right now.